the Holy Spirit will guide a person of vision. When Peter's vision came three times, it stuck to him and something happened. Uh, we see in the Bible that the moment there was a knock on the door, the moment there was a knock on the door, the three men symbolize opportunity. When there was an opportunity knocking on the door, the Holy Spirit in that moment said to Peter, your turn. People always ask me, well, I'm believing that I'm going to be financially free. I'm believing I am going to be healed. I'm believing that my home group is going to grow. But Vlad, how? This is how. A person who has a vision that grows inside of him, comes a moment when opportunity knocks. People without vision don't hear it. Because opportunities usually are dressed like adversities. And because they're dressed like obstacles, we run away from them. They're dressed like strangers. You don't recognize their voice. Only the people who have a vision inside. Ah, this is from God. Another person will say, ah, these are strangers, run! People without vision miss the knocking of three men. And they always say, God, why are you not sending a miracle? See, God sends a miracle, but it's your vision inside that you keep that helps you to recognize the knocking of three men. Helps you recognize financial response, financial dealings. Help you to recognize deals that other people will say, oh, this will not work, this will fail. And you say, man, this will work. The Holy Spirit speaks to the person of vision. If you're not a person of vision, the Holy Spirit cannot speak to you about opportunities. You will miss opportunities. Opportunities don't happen to lucky people. Opportunities happen to people who are in prayer, saying, God, give me a new vision. Who hold on to that when things are tough. And when opportunity presents, those people usually take advantage of those opportunities. Can somebody say amen? There was a man named Edwin Barnes. Some hundred years ago, he had this dream that he wanted to partner with Thomas Edison and he wanted to work with Thomas Edison. The only problem with this man is two problems. If you can go back to the picture. This man had two problems. One of them, he did not know Thomas Edison. Number two, he was so poor, he didn't even have enough money to buy a train ticket to go see Thomas Edison in New Jersey. Two big problems. But he was convinced he will partner with Thomas Edison. Another problem was that this guy was not smart. Thomas Edison was. Thomas Edison doesn't partner with stupid people. Thomas Edison is very intelligent. He's a science the guy. He creates things, invents things. And if you don't, you're not going to partner with Thomas Edison. But this young man had a vision. I am going to partner with Thomas Edison. Buys a ticket, finds some money, goes to where Thomas Edison in schedules an interview with Thomas Edison. When he comes to meet Thomas Edison, he looks like he comes from the streets. He looks like he has nothing. And Thomas Edison looked at him and actually, I'm just gonna read to you exactly what Thomas Edison said. He said, he stood there before me looking like an ordinary Trump, but there was something in the expression of his face which conveyed the impression that he was determined to get what he came after. I had learned from years of experience with men when a man really desires a thing so deeply that he is willing to stake his entire future on a single turn of a wheel in order to get it, he is sure to win. I gave him an opportunity he asked for because I saw he had made up his mind to stand by until he succeeded. Synchrony events proved that no mistake was made. But this is what happened. Thomas Edison hired him as a janitor. Somebody can say, well, my dream came to pass. I partnered with Thomas Edison. But his dream was not to work as a janitor for Thomas Edison, to partner with Thomas Edison. He worked as a janitor for Thomas Edison five years. In those times, he would pay close attention to Thomas Edison, how he walked, how he dressed, what ticked him off happy moments, bad moments. I mean, he was like a sponge mopping the floors, but he always had his eyes on Thomas Edison. People worked with Thomas Edison for a long time who never partnered with him. Here is a janitor mopping floors, still has a dream. 
I didn't come here to mop floors for him. I came here to partner with him. Until Thomas Edison, if you can show the picture, releases a machine. It's called the Edison Dictating Machine. He releases that machine and none of his sales guys believe this machine can lift the ground. It means they don't believe this machine will sell. In the business meeting, they all start one by one saying, Edison, you're a great guy. This is your mistake. It won't sell, we won't sell it. This mopper guy went there to mop the floor and overheard how they said they can't sell it. But Thomas Edison already made plenty of them. When everyone left, he comes to him and he says, Sir, would you give me an opportunity? A little try, give me just a little time so that I can sell that machine that everyone said it won't sell. Thomas Edison said, since I have to throw it away, I will let you do it. This man sells that machine like he will sell his life. He does it so passionately, does it so enthusiastically. He sells all of the machines Thomas Edison had until Thomas Edison made him a partner and the only distributor of these machines in the, in the United States of America. In a very short time, this man became a multimillionaire. Thus, his dream became a reality. Why? Man had a vision, refused to give up when obstacles came, and intuition kicked in. It's interesting, all the co-workers did not get an idea to sell this machine when it wasn't selling. Only one guy in that building. You know who that guy was? Not the most smartest guy, not the most handsome guy, the guy with the vision. You know how you're not gonna miss your opportunities? If you have a vision inside of you before they come. When they will knock, if the vision is inside, you'll hear the knock, not as a stranger, as a friend. Other people will hear the knock and say, we should run away. You will hear the knock and say, I gotta open the door. And you will enter into the reality of your dream, of your vision. Can somebody say amen? Christian life should not be about rules and regulations. It's supposed to be about dreams and visions. Working with God and with the Holy Spirit. My friends, these are not fairy tales I'm telling you from 90s. These are the truths from the Bible, from the God's Word. Visions and dreams, you already have them. The question is, what kind of visions and dreams? Worthless, bad, sick, my kids are acting up, my wife is crazy, my husband is crazy, my boss is crazy, my work is crazy, everything is crazy, and at the end, I'm crazy. That's a bad vision. Change your vision. God will change.